Good evening everyone, Ads here from Unity Trading Group. Welcome to the Friday night update. Of course, before we begin, hit that like button, tap the subscribe button if you can, and of course, tick the bell to stay updated on all of our updates coming out next week. This will be the last update for this week, of course. So BTC, as we are continuing on the trend or on the trajectory that we spoke about the other night, first and foremost, thank you for my partner in crime, Tex, as you all know him in the Discord, uh, filled in my shoes last night. But I am back and we are continuing on that movement to the upside as we did speak about a couple of days ago. So in, initially we spoke about this level of demand at 47k and then we identified two levels uh, of interest for BTC. First of which was the 38.2 at 52,500. And then of course we had this le level here at 56,600 in which we were identifying some liquidity to the left-hand side. And if I turn on the gravy train cloud, you can see some of that, those cloud resistances or cloud support levels being respected also. But it was mainly because we did have a fair amount of support and resistance flip areas uh, occurring to the left-hand side of us and at that price point. And also it was smack bang in the middle of a fair amount of liquidity to the left hand side. And then if you wanna get even further into it, we do have a short term level of uh, supply sitting right there as well. So let's keep that on the chart anyway, and let's see where we're, where we're headed. So initially it was the movement up. We did hit our level of supply or our level of resistance. And of course we pulled back to the 38.2 in which we spoke about on Tuesday, I believe it was and we are continuing that trajectory to the upside. So that's the area that I expect BTC to retest uh, in the immediate term. We are just poking our heads above the 50 RSI currently and uh, looking like we'll probably retest 55,800 at least over the next couple of days, if not even the course of this evening into tomorrow or into the weekend. Some of these weekends that we've observed over the last couple of weeks have been a little bit lulled, have been a little bit right-hand side, uh, not so much happening. So we'll see if we get a difference this weekend and we get the movement back up to that 56K mark that we've been speaking about for quite some time. If we do reject here for a second time and get more liquidity or more selling pressure coming in at 56, then we'll be speaking more about the 50, the 61, and of course, a retest of that level at 47k if we do get there if we do get there but for the immediate term for the uh for the price action that we're going to see over the next little bit i think that's going to reside around that 55 55 500 around that 56k mark where we do have that level of supply drawn in <clears throat> next ethereum usd creating all-time highs once again. That did happen today. Uh, we are reaching a point where we are running a little bit out of steam in the way of uh, ETH. It looks like we are just edging and crawling upwards in the way of price action now. That does suggest to me we are a little bit exhausted. That is uh, validated, of course, by our steamroller indicator. You can find more in the description down below. If you wanna find out any more about any of our indicators, you can find them at unitytradinggroup.com, of course. And uh, the link to the uh, Discord is down below, so just come and join the conversation. But in regards to ETH again, we are getting validated of exhaustion with uh, our steamroller indicator up the top there. It really comes down to how far is the pullback gonna be uh, for ETH. There is a pullback that is going to occur, uh, usually, um, pullbacks do occur and uh, that happens right after all-time highs so we get an all-time high we pull back get an all-time high we pull back and of course we've made another high and the pullback in my opinion will be around that 2550 or even 2500 around that 23.6 Fibonacci level that we've got drawn in there so let's redraw the fibs to give us a little bit of a, a, a better zone to look at I've ruined that. hang on a second Let's draw it properly, draw from left to right. And we do see the 38.2 at 2535 does line up very nicely with our level of demand. So that looks to be like the area that I would be looking for, for a pullback for the Ethereum USD pair. If we do get down to that level at 38.2, it's gonna get 
real close in the way of our RSI uh, reaching towards that 50 level. And if you haven't jumped on the train for this RSI, it is free. You can go into the indicators. You can search UTG, whoops, you can search UTG slash RSI. And then you've got our free indicator that you can use there. We're adding more functionality over the next little bit. Uh, specifically, actually I won't divulge into what we're adding to this, but there's more functionality on the way for this indicator. So there's more goods for free coming uh, in the way of the RSI indicator. <clears throat> Next one we'll have a look at is XRP. So XRP, I've been pretty vocal in the Discord about over the past two or so days. And uh, I wanted to validate the levels that we were really talking about. So from this level down here at about a dollar or at about 95 cents uh, was my last buy pre personally for full transparency. I was looking for this sort of area here for our first test around a dollar 40 and that did come to fruition. That really followed BTC. So BTC we were looking at the previous liquidity to the left hand side for a retest of that zone. And of course we did have XRP follow in that same trend. So the, the, the TA, the price action, was very similar to the BTC price action. I really drew fibs from swing low to swing high, and it was from this swing low, of course. Drawing from left to right, and of course we were identifying the 38.2. That didn't play out exactly, so we didn't get that bounce, admittedly, on the 38 exactly, but to continue the trend to the upside, uh, the tw negative 27.2 extension was the area that I'm looking for, and that's coming to light now. So over the next probably day or so, if we do expect BTC to come up and retest that upper level that we spoke about just, just before circling back to BTC, we could probably expect XRP to follow in the same sort of footsteps. And of course, that falls very much in line with its level of supply that resides around $1.55 and we are making ways through that level now. If we do decide to move through this for XRP, and I think we will in personal, you know, in, in my personal opinion, uh, I think $1.80 or $1.81 or the negative 61 Fibonacci extension there. And of course, our next level of supply up the top there would more than likely be the area that I'd be more interested in uh, for a swing trade and a swing trade being the extremities of the market. So the market cycle is bearish. We do flip bullish. So we enter a new market cycle. And of course, coming up to that negative 61 at 181, that would be the extremities of a next or the next market cycle for XRP. So that's the area that I'm looking more towards over the next couple of days. And I do think personally, we will get there. So that's not financial advice at all, just my opinion on what we are going to do. But the negative 61 does seem to come to fruition and it does seem to be respected, of course, in, uh, in the fashion of uh, FIBS. We could go higher than that. We could get to $2, I don't know. Um, but I'm just calling it as I see it. We are eating away this level of supply as I speak. And of course, the next level above us is $1.82. The last one I'll have a look at tonight, I'm not going to bore you all for your Friday evening, is the DXY. Of course, this is a regulated market. This is not financial advice, just ideas and opinions of UTG. So the DXY, of course, uh, has moved through our level of uh, demand now. We are getting a little bit of a lull and a bit of a retest of the previous resistances or previous levels of support that are now resistance. So I'm going to draw in the most relevant level, in my opinion, for a demand, of course that resides at 90.40. I'm using this red candle in the pause or the break in the market and uh, the previous top of the demand, uh, previous top of the uh, previous body to really give us a sizable area. If I draw it a little bit further down, it becomes, little, whoops, if I draw it a little bit further down, it becomes a little bit too large, so we'll keep it at that for now. It does seem that we've been respected on this current level now, <clears throat> but, are we going to get a further upwards movement for a relief that will come tonight more than likely as it's the last trading day? I'm looking at this area here. Of course, we did have levels of support, of course, resistance levels now, and that could form our resistance now again for a further movement to the downside if we are to see that happen on the DXY. 90.86 would be the area of interest for me for the DXY over the last uh, trading session of the week. 
And of course, we'll revisit this again Monday evening for our next market update. But I'm Ads from UTG. Thank you all for joining me tonight. It's been a little bit sporadic in the way our updates have come uh, over the course of this week. I did uh, explain myself earlier on this week, of course. But we have been very vocal in the Discord. You can find that link down below if you want to join that conversation. Gravy Train, of course, uh, is our bread and butter in the way uh, of uh, indicators, as far as indicators go. You can see the validity of Gravy Train, especially just in this snippet of the DXY that I'm looking at. So if you want to know more info about that, you can fo follow the link down in the description. Again, I'm Ads from UTG. Thank you all for joining me. We'll see you in the Discord. Bye for now.